friends welcome to today's presentation on political economy of the media and uh, political economy as we'll see in today's discussion is uh, discusses the interrelationships between the economic sphere between the social sphere between the political sphere and the cultural sphere so it does not give predominance to one particular sphere over the other but talks of the relationship between these spheres and the totality of relations uh, of, of, of human life uh, covering these uh, spheres. So uh, political economy, as I just said, is a branch of social science that studies the relationship between the different spheres of life. And, based, uh, and, and specifically, it discusses the relationship between the individuals and society, between markets and the state. And the tools that we employ in this uh, field are drawn from economics, from political science, from sociology, and even from uh, uh, cultural studies. And the etymology is from the Greek word polis, which means state, and oikonomos, which means one who manages a household or a state. Uh, as in many things in economics, uh, the political economy uh, concept is also uh, uh, linked to uh, Adam Smith and his work on the, an inquiry into the natural uh, nature and causes of the wealth of nations. So in this book, uh, uh, Adam Smith uh, talks about the distribution of wealth and power and how it depends on the political, economic, uh, technological, natural and social factors and the complex interactions between them. So as we'll see, uh, political economy uh, draws heavily on the uh, uh, various uh, political, economic, uh, cultural, technological and social factors. So uh, originally, as I said, it, it referred to a tradition of economic thinking which addressed the production, the distribution and consumption of resources used to sustain human existence. And one of the very important premises here was that knowledge is not value free or it is not something that is natural, but it is always uh, has a critical normative perspective. And this is required to find out whether uh, present system uh, sustains the existing uh, social conditions, for example, or it just uh, uh, allows for a status quo of the conditions that exist or whether it challenges uh, those uh, social conditions for one. So there are uh, different perspectives on uh, how, how knowledge can be uh, seen in a critical normative perspective. And in, in today's discussion, we will talk about that as well. So it examines the uh, social, political and economic pressures and interests that affect the policies. So whenever we have these public policies, what are the uh, uh, economic and the uh, social and the political pressures for one and how these influence the political process. And this takes into account a lot of uh, social priorities and even, even uh, international environments and development strategies and uh, philosophical perspective. So that is uh, more on, on, on general context. And as I go along, uh, we'll talk more specifically about the media and the uh, communication field. So one of the dimensions of uh, political economic analysis is studying the policies of, of nations or, or policies between nations. So how certain policies within a nation can influence the pattern of national economic growth? Does it uh, favor one group of people over other group of people or it also studies whether as far as international trade is concerned whether these policies favor richer countries over poorer countries so these, there are many dimensions of political economic analysis and as we go along we'll have a uh, have a deeper analysis of, of uh, how, how this is undertaken so uh, this is uh, one very popular definition of uh, political uh, uh, economy. This is by Vincent Moscow in 2009. And this uh, says that it is the study of social relations, particularly power relations. So uh, power relations among the social relations that mutually cons constitute the production, the distribution and consumption of resources, including the communication resources. So it basically studies the power relations that, that uh, constitute the production of resources. So it could be production of communication resources or production of, of media content as well. The distribution of those resources. So it could be about uh, distribution of media content and how that is consumed, how different people consume that con uh, content, for example. So it studies the power relations that, that undergird that or, or power relations that, that are, that are uh, important for these three processes. So it does not, for example, take a capitalism structure as, as, as a given or, or something which is 
natural it seeks to explain how it, it has emerged and what are its implications for human law, life across societies so there are uh, three very important things concerning political economy that we must be clear about and one of them is commodification and commodification means transforming things that are valued for us or that that hold value for us and transforming them into marketable product that can bring in exchange for example we as consumers of of, of media content are also commodified for advertisers so this is one perspective of political economy that uh, all these things that that have uh, value they are uh, uh, converted into marketable products that can bring in exchange uh, another important dimension of uh, uh, the political economic theory is the spatialization the process of overcoming the constraints of geographical space so space is is is, is no longer no longer uh, an impediment and uh, for example uh, through television and and through global coverage we can uh, overcome this uh, distance the problem of distance by bringing images instantaneously to every part of the globe and this is also used especially the information and communication technology and the dimensions of computer media uh, communication to organize business on a worldwide basis so it allows access to people with capital to all the markets in the world and also the flexibility to move so when conditions are not favorable in in uh, one part of the globe they would move off to another part of the globe so so this is another dimension of uh, uh, political economy which is spatialization and the third is structuration and this is uh, the process of creating a social relations so mainly the relations of, of social class relations of, of gender and relation of, of 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 race so political economy basically describes for example how access to mass media and the new communication technologies is influenced by by inequalities in in, in income for example in inequalities in in in, in, in social class for example and across genders for example so it sees how how uh, uh, access is 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 uh, determined by these uh, uh, factors of, of of class gender and race for example so this is another very popular definition of uh, political economy which uh, describes political economy as the study of control and survival in social life so the control processes are basically political so we can use mass media content to control social life by suggesting that this is right and this is not right so they constitute the uh, social organization of relationship between a community and the survival processes are basically economic because they concern the processes of production and reproduction so in that sense political economy is the study of uh, control in social life and uh, and survival in social life so uh, there are four different dimensions of uh, uh, political economy which has which have been described by scholars over the years so the, the so political economy is is not as i said not not just uh, it does not uh, 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 give priority to one uh, uh, sphere of life over the other so there are four uh, different uh, uh, dimensions of uh, political economy or political economic an analysis and first is that we study this as as a, a social change and history so we study the dynamics of uh, capitalism for example the growth of 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 capital the state apparatus and uh, 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 things related to that so so we trace the historical processes which have led to the present system and not regarding this as a, as a given or not regarding the present system as as a natural system so for example uh, there are studies which uh, study uh, how we have transited or how we have uh, uh, grown from or how we have uh, carried forth from industrial to the present information economy and as we said at the beginning uh, political uh, uh, economic analysis is also about the totality of social relations the relations that make up the economic uh, area of life the relations that make up the political area of life the social area and the cultural area so uh, we we uh, basically account for the mutual influence of the political and the economic to wider social and symbolic spheres of life so we do not uh, talk only of the economic dimension but also the political dimension and their mutual influence on each other for the wider social and uh, cultural spheres 
this also entails an interest in moral philosophy so political economy uh, deals with uh, a particular moral philosophy both in in terms of uh, uh, what 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 uh, is, is is the right social behavior and what moral principles we must employ to change the status quo so so it is it is an interest both in the uh, values that help create the social behavior and the moral principles that are required to uh, guide uh, efforts to change it so it it provides uh, normative ideas about what society should be or or what are the measures needed to uh, reach to uh, that normative and uh, most importantly it also talks of social praxis that means the fundamental unity of thinking and doing so it's it's it, it talks of intervention for example so it does not just only describe the historical process or just does not describe the uh, the, the relationship between the uh, four different spheres of life but it also talks about social intervention as a form of knowledge that uh, this is this is a system which exists and we need to change it uh, to this uh, ideal and this is how we do it so it views intellectual life both as a social transformation and also social intervention so uh, how that social intervention is carried out is 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 is, is, is another thing but uh, it's important to understand that it is not only about thinking but also about doing so there are uh, two major uh, uh, origins of of political economy of communication for example for, one is the the uh, tradition in uh, united states which uh, is uh, from the institute of communication research and the other which is known as the westminster school in england so as we'll see the american tradition was was started by dallas smith and and herbert schiller and in british tradition we had uh, uh, nicholas garnham and uh, 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 um, uh, graham murdock and and peter golding and james curran so we had two different uh, uh, strands of political economy research and recently we also have uh, the uh, political economy tradition in the uh, developing world also so here uh, these are these are some of the important uh, strands in both the american and the british sphere so this is uh, dallas smith's uh, uh, work on on uh, dependency and uh, communication capitalism in Canada. Uh, this is uh, uh, Herbert Schiller's Mass Communication and the American Empire, and uh, Herbert Schiller is also uh, responsible for for the New World Information and Communication Order and the uh, McBride Commission uh, that that we know of. Uh, uh, James Curran also from from the British tradition, and then of course uh, Nicholas Garnham and uh, Murdoch and Golding's work on a political economy of mass communication in the mid 70s. uh this this is uh, some of the recent work and uh, i've drawn on them for for today's presentation so so uh, robert mcchesney's work on the political economy of media uh, vincent mosco's political economy of communication and a recent uh, work on on studying the political economy of media and information by professor uh, janet vasco of uh, oregon university and uh, many other uh, traditions which include christian folk's work and and uh, work by noam chomsky and others so this is a very important definition on political economy of journalism this suggests that political economy of journalism uh, studies how journalists are influenced by the political and economic power relations within an agenda setting context and how that impacts on their responsibility to serve as watchdogs rather than mere lap dogs so it studies how journalists are influenced by these relations within an agenda setting context because that's an important work that we do as journalists and how that work is is influenced by these relations and how that impacts our responsibility to serve as watchdogs rather than mere lap dogs and this is especially important in terms of financial pressure because there is of course the temptation to to create uh, uh, coverage whose objective is to attract advertisers because we are uh, dealing in 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 a structure in which advertisement uh, revenue is paramount and it's of very very great importance so that is of course is an objective but whether we can uh, perform both these objectives of uh, attracting advertisers and also serving readers so uh, media systems as i said uh, this this is uh, again a, a political economic outlook this is not a given or it is not a, a natural uh, order this is a result of policies that have resulted from an intensely political process 
so we have been historically through uh, these uh, political processes and the media system that we have is a result of those policies and it is the job of uh, uh, political economic researchers to scrutinize these policies and what are the contingencies and what are the contradictions and whose interest they serve so their uh, crucial goal as we say is to emphasize that the power structures are the ones that produce the media system the media systems are not uh, natural by implication so uh, it also uh, analyzes the power relations between the media systems between the information and communication technology and the wider social economic structure within these uh, within which these operate and the focus is on understanding the historical uh, 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 dimensions and the current state so how we have uh, reached uh, through these uh, contestations into the present stage of of uh, 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 media that we are in so that our relations are very important in uh, any analysis of media so according to mcchesney the political economic study of media involves uh, uh, these dimensions so one of this could be a study of the poli policy making processes uh, with a, with an em emphasis on history on the historical processes uh, it could also involve a detailed examination of the relationship of the communication and information to the evolving global system of capitalism so whether it, it supports that or whether it is a part of that particular system it also involves a critique of the of the uh, market which is uh, uh, given and uh, a critique of the media markets also it is also a critique or and study of the advertisement and its relationship to uh, 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 to to marketing so how advertisement is is uh, 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 defining the, the the communication process and how it is linked to the marketing dimensions and it also involves integrating the media and communication studies into the larger democratic theory and a rigorous study of journalism in that light so whether uh, the, the the functions of journalism they are in consonance with with uh, uh, what what uh, 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 democratic theory is or whether it is it is good for democracy and things like that and of course at the political economy of internet looking at at the control dimensions looking at at digital surveillance looking at uh, the issues of, of of spectrum of copyright of privacy so all these dimensions uh, are, are a part of the political economic analysis of media so uh, political economy addresses in a critical manner and in, in a future slide we'll describe what critical means how the media system interacts with and affects the overall nature of power in society so how does it interact with power and how does it reflect power or how does it aid uh, those in power so uh, one of the questions that we ask as political economic analysts is that do the media serve as a progressive force to draw people into political debate as informed participants and as effective participants or does it just reinforce elite rule and in egalitarian social relations so does it just uh, uh, support the status quo or, and or does it involve drawing people into a political debate and to an informed political debate and uh, into an effective political debate which would lead to policy changes to uh, uh, bring uh, or to set right what is uh, not right in society so what is critical critical means that the media system needs to keep a check on people who are in power or, or who wish to be in power so that is the job of the media system or at least that is what the critical theories uh, main main uh, crux is and the media system has to be capable of finding out the truth from lies and that's what uh, as, as, as critical theorists we have to look for so the media system has to provide a range of informed opinion on crucial social and political issues as well as advance scout what are the problems on the horizon what are the problems which could arise because of certain policies or which could arise because of certain changes in society for that matter so the media system has to provide the range of uh, informed opinion also not just as a platform to bring in informed citizens but also to provide a range of opinion on these crucial social and political issues so uh, it uh, one of the exclusive domains of political economy is is uh, an evaluation of how market structures how advertising support how labor relations how profit motivations and technologies 
they impact uh, the the nature and content of the news and entertainment so how all these structures uh, impact the, the the journalistic practices and it requires as we suggested a, a mastery of uh, microeconomics of of history of journalism and policy studies so in, in that way it it, it it's it, it draws on, on on the best practices of these fields it also examines the policy making processes as we have seen in the past and this is not about whether a given policy is, is is natural but how did it come to be and that is where the notion of critical junctures is important that there have been certain critical junctures and those critical junctures have led to these long standing policies that we are going through so so the present uh, social economic and and political structure is is uh, because of what happened in those critical junctures so as uh, uh, analyst we have to be aware of what those critical junctures are because it, it is in those junctures that these long standing policies are made and sustained and people support those uh, uh, policies so what are the uh, uh, dimensions of those critical junctures so these are relatively brief uh, periods in which dramatic changes are debated and enacted upon so there are a lot of opinions and it is it is during those critical junctures that people debate about how society should change or how things should change so generally we have a long period in which which there is there is a little change or there is there is a, a change which is slow and difficult then suddenly we have those brief and rare periods in which dramatic changes are debated and also enacted so uh, as analysts we find out what are those cr critical junctures or whether we are leading to a certain critical juncture like that in the future as well so there are uh, dimensions of what critical juncture is these critical junctures do not last uh, more than one or two decades so the pandemic that we are in could be one of the critical junctures so the range of options for society that uh, how uh, our future life should be or how our future society should be or the debate on these ranges is is much greater during these critical junctures and the decisions that are made during these periods they establish institutions and rules that put us on a course that will be difficult to change in fundamental change for decades so these institutions and these rules are likely to sustain for a longer duration so that's why an understanding of the critical juncture is extremely important so uh Uh, mcchesney provides a, a, a talks about three different uh, uh, dimensions of the critical juncture and at least two uh, two of these three uh, uh, conditions must be satisfied for for uh, change to take place so one is that there is a revolutionary new communication technology that undermines the existing system so when we had internet for example or when we had television for example or when we had radio for example or or print for example so those uh, are, are the areas where uh, Uh, a, a critical juncture is possible and the content of the media system especially journalism is is increasingly discredited or seen as uh, illegitimate so when there is a new uh, system of technology and we are also of the opinion that the earlier system is is is, is discredited or not, is is not do, uh, doing the job that it should be doing so that is one uh, condition which which can be defined as 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 a, 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 a critical juncture period and the third is that there is a major political crisis which in which existing order is no longer possible or or in which uh, these major social reform movements are are more widely seen so these three dimensions are extremely important the the presence of 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 new technology the disillusionment with journalism and a major political crisis mcchesney suggests that if an, any of uh, two of these three conditions are satisfied then we reach a situation in which new policies can be formed or in which there is more social acceptance for new policies or or, or change of the status quo so uh, this is another uh, dimension of uh, uh, political economics in the third world we have spoken about uh, the, the the first world and and in in and in you know uh, how how uh, we have seen it in, in the uh, united states and and in the british structures so the political economy study of of the uh, the developing world basically has been a res in response to the modernization theory that uh, media would lead to modernization or media would lead to more development so those western uh, conceptions uh, 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 you know by by uh, daniel learner for example they are challenged uh, 
by by uh, theorists in the developing world because uh, uh, this technological determinism the belief that technology will be an answer to all our problems is 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 challenged and uh, the the uh, uh, what are the power relations that uh, shape the relation be between the, between the first world nation and third world nation between the various classes in uh, these nations and, and among these nations so they are more important so the study of power relations is more important rather than a, a, a pure and simple technological deterministic idea that if we have new technology that will take care of all our problems so uh, there are uh, some examples of uh, political economic research this is from professor janet vasco's work so there are historical studies there are studies that study the uh, media and communication business for example for example whether there have been concentration or whether there have been uh, diversification and all those kind of things also the, uh, about how, how globalization works about how the relation between media and state and from the audience perspective as well so one very important distinction of the political economic perspective for example from the media economic perspective is about the uh, audience role in in consuming content so these are the new directions in which a uh, political economic analysis can take place or or researchers in political economy uh, could be interested in one is the survival of the press media the media in its present form so whether it it, it will survive and you know those kind of things the new business models for digital journalism so crowdsourcing as we know and there are so many other revenue models so how are those revenue models working and whether it has any impact on content and distribution and those kind of things the restructuring of traditional news companies and and the uh, uh, changes that have taken place because of the present crisis uh, the political economic research can also talk about the ethical crisis of, of journalism especially in, in terms of uh, uh, fake content the role of uh, public sector broadcasting for example in in the present uh, socio economic setup how how viable that is or how necessary that is these dimensions are an important area of uh, political economic research and also as i said uh, crowd sourced fun funding not only for for digital journalism but also for alternative form of journalism and then also looking at journalism as labor and it, it's a place in in the value production uh the role of journalists in the age of social networks and that is such an important dimension so uh, how do they serve as purveyors of information in 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 the, in, the uh, in a social network analysis process and finally who are those journalists so how do we define journalists so the definition of uh, uh, journalists itself uh, has has uh, changed uh, in in the present uh, digital uh, structure the role of women and women journalists is important uh, uh, area of analysis as is the role of social networks uh, and we've been having a lot of discussion on, on uh, platforms including twitter so that again is an important area for uh, political economic uh, analysis and how we can manage the information and media spectacle and and to make it uh, a lot more participatory and, and and a lot more effective the role of uh, google and facebook spe specifically and also instagram and twitter for example and then uh, you know i've spoken about this in in an earlier video also the issues of diverse uh, digital surveillance and the issues of 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 surveillance capitalism so that's a very important area for future political economic research uh this is from uh, mcquail's book on mass communication theory and he talks of the eight different dimensions of uh, uh, political economy i'm going to just briefly describe uh, what these dimensions are so uh, 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 mcquail suggests that e economic control and logic are are one of the determinants as we've suggested that uh, of course there are the other spheres which are important the political sphere the social sphere and the cultural sphere but the economic control is a determinant according to a mcquail and the media structure always trends towards monopoly so these uh, when it is when it is a part of that global capitalist structure these media structures they tend towards a monopoly or that's what a political economic analysis uh, 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 sees Uh, global integration of media ownership develops or, or these global interactions between media owners global media owners is seen and uh, as we've seen earlier the content is commodified it's it, it's a commodity which has an exchange value in terms of uh, how many, how much trp does it bring or how much clicks does it bring or how much revenue does it bring and audience themselves are commodified because we are uh, a commodity for the advertisers and uh, that is that is uh, the, the the main source of revenue for Uh, media organizations generally uh 
and one 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 fallout of uh, this is that uh, the real diversity decreases because when these are the determinants and because these are the factors that uh, describe the 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 uh, 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 media content process that's why we have similarity in content and similarity in voices and others and that's where the opposition voices and marginalized voices are not given a, a place because of these uh, political economic dimensions uh, and the public interest in communication is subordinated to private interest and the benefits of communication are also unequally distributed it is not distributed uh, among, among everybody but uh, the access is 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 restricted to people as we've seen before uh, you know b belonging to certain classes certain genders and and uh, certain uh, geographical areas as well and uh, finally uh, these are the future dimensions of what a political economic uh, research could be so uh, there's a lot of work on on political economy and feminism for example on on race and ethnicity and you know how these factors uh, media production and and media consumption about uh, the audience or reception analysis and that's a very important dimension that we are generally when we are talking about these macro structures the 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 media uh, the audience response is is a very important way to look at it and there have been a lot of studies especially from from an anthropological perspective looking at the historical roots of uh, consumption and there have been a lot of work on on ethnography and political economy as well so as as we've seen this is a very very important uh, dimension of media and communication research uh, thank you for your participation